Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Graham coming to you from Chicago. As usual, we've got men in their emotions. It's beautiful. I'm told that this is an awesome thing, much like marriage. I haven't seen it work yet. <laughs> Either thing. <laughs> but people keep telling me it's awesome. They keep telling me it's awesome. They haven't convinced me. <laughs> they haven't convinced me. But uh, here we go. For all you emotional men lovers, this is your night. Who, who do I have to thank for this stuff? Jalapeno. I believe Alyssa. Rocky Lennon. So I can think of right now. But if there, if there are more, I'll try to get them as we go. Let's do this thing, shall we? Are you in fear of Mr. Barber? No, I'm not. Okay. And you I weigh 350 pounds. I'm definitely not in fear of him. Now before the court is Courtney Smith of cases 13418DS and case 22851DS. In each of these matters, Mr. Smith is here today after failing to appear before this court on September 13th, 2023. For the record, that was a bench warrant hearing. Uh, Mr. Smith was previously before the court for a bond review hearing on September 5th of 2023. He was given a $100 bond in each case which he posted and then failed to appear for the hearing. Bond in each case is currently set at $500. This is the third bench warrant in the 2013 case and the second bench warrant in the 22 case. He reports no employment. Last payment made on these accounts was the $100 bond forfeiture. Friend of the court recommends that reasonable bonds be set in these matters and they be scheduled for hearing on March 27th, 2024 at 8 o'clock a.m. before this court. Mr. Smith, uh, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. Purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenants at the next hearing on October, excuse me, on... I like that, Alyssa, taking responsibility. That's That's impressive. March 27, 2024, 8 o'clock a.m. You will get notice of that in writing. Are you able to post a bond, sir? No, sir. Um, sir, uh, I was just like talking to you. Um, I'm not, she's not allowing me to see my kids. She don't let me see my kids. She don't, I don't even have her phone number. Okay, that, that's as a result. That's a separate action. If, if, you don't, if you don't get to see your kids, you have a right to file a motion. To have uh, the other party held in contempt for not uh, again complying with any orders of the court, but I'm that's just, not what we're addressing today, sir. I know, and I'm just like I'm not older in the head right now, man. Like it's it's really really messed me up in the head. Like we're not gonna never see my kid. Okay, <laughs> well, like, sir. The way you're talking, I can't understand a thing you're saying. So I'm sorry. Pose okay, yourself so and talk I, uh, I, talk such that I can hear you. Right. Well, I'm sorry. Um, I can't like. My day to day functions ain't normal anymore. I don't know how to explain it to you. Okay. Oh, sweet Jesus. What? September 5th, we gave you, I gave you a favorable bench or a favorable bond at that time. And a week later, you didn't show up to court. Why didn't you show up? Sir, I have not the slightest idea because my head right now is just not there. It's like, it's like, I don't know how to explain okay, it to you, Okay, well, sir. we're, we're going we're gonna to help you, sir, so that you don't miss another court date. The court does uh, believe in view of the God, fact that uh, you didn't show up the last time when uh, you were given a favorable bond. The court is going to continue the bonds in the amount of $500 in both cases. Please, 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 sir, can I need a little bit That will be the please. order of the court, sir. You're free to go. Have a good day. Sir, 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 please, can I, can I please get nope. us a little moment? No, you can show up on the uh, 27th, and we'll talk to you then. Because I will show up. I promise you and everything I love. I will show up. I'm going to get a job right now. Well, you, you, didn't show show up last, you didn't show up last time, sir, so I don't have any, uh, I don't have any credence in what you're going to say. That was my first and only time, though, sir. Can you please, please, please just 
forward. Well, you know, we to won't let it happen please. a second time. Good. Thanks. I, I promise you, call, I will. sir. Mute him and. There we go. Go ahead. Okay, that be a no. Some bench warrants for the record, if I may. Go ahead. Derek, you want to let me talk about it? Hey, Dirk, what's not you? Come on. Come on. Uh, I got this from Chidaskadam or however the hell you say that. And uh, uh, and Iris in Texas, who passed it along to me. It's out there. You can hear your honor. All right. Mr. Half, you are before the court on a felony complaint that alleges that on or about September 25th, 2023, the location of 2325 Twin Lakes Drive, apartment TA, Pittsfield Township, Washtenaw County, State of Michigan, that you did commit the offense of aggravated indecent exposure. Sir, do you understand the date that just... Do you understand what you're charged? I actually prefer this to crying. I really do. Do it, sir. <laughs> you are saying motherfucking queers, bitch. Quit fucking stopping me. You bad ass motherfucker. I will take that as a yes. That is a misdemeanor, a high court misdemeanor. Punishable by up to two years and or a two thousand dollar fine plus court costs. Do you understand that? Sir, do you understand the maximum penalties? Yeah, you can fuck them over the fucking door, bitch. I got the defendant is responding it's inaudible but i believe that he understands the maximum penalties count two is a misdemeanor offense that alleges that on that same date and at that same time that you did commit the offense of indecent exposure never basically pulled anything out um so you can talk with your attorney about that yeah 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 well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna expose myself and do you understand that charge, sir? Hey, I'm I'm not hearing a response. He is present in the area. He is um, present and listening, Your Honor. All right, that is a misdemeanor punishable by up to one year incarceration and or a one thousand dollar fine plus court costs. I will ask, although you're not responding, Mr. Heff, do you understand the nature of that charge and its maximum penalties? If you not hear a response, I will assume that the defendant has heard the charges and the maximum penalties. I will ask you first, sir, do you wish to be represented by counsel? Mr. Heff, do you wish to have an attorney represent you in this matter? I'm not hearing a response, but given the nature of the charges, the court to protect the defendant's rights will, this becomes a public defender case. You waive any further formal reading of the complaint. Yes, we waive formal reading and we stand mute. Defendant, every way formal reading, standing mute to the charges, court will enter a not guilty plea, demanding a preliminary examination. You waive timelines on this. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Timelines haven't been waived. I will set a probable cause conference. Yeah, it ain't gonna matter. What? March 28th or April 4th. Let's do April 4th. Gonna be a better month. Set probable cause conference for April 4th, 2024. That will be at 9 a.m. and this preliminary examination will be set from that date. As to bond in this case. Your Honor, as it relates to bond, I think that Ms. Uh, Kuhn will be presenting the court probably with a uh, motion for, uh, or, or an order for finding of competency or competency. Um, I'll tell the court I was familiar with Mr. Hest in 15th. I'll note that um, he was found in that case. He had a misdemeanor malicious use of telecommunications service. That case he was found opined originally to be incompetent to stand trial but restorable. Uh, that's a six-month misdemeanor. So not surprisingly, the Center for Forensic Psychiatry was unable to see him within that two-month period of time. That time frame elapses, he becomes 
he has been found to be incompetent. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't have a lot of resources to his name. I'll be upfront with the court. I spoke to his mother multiple times. I recognize that he has an illness, um, and I've tried to figure out act in his best interest using his mom. It, it, as I understand it, he doesn't have any family that are willing to kind of um, stick up for him. Except for other than his mother, I'm asking the court for a high cash bond, ten thousand, fifty thousand, only in so much as a way. And I'm saying this deliberately, not that I expect him to be able to post it, but I need you. I'm asking the court to consider it so high so that the mother isn't doesn't feel obligated that she has to post it for him. I'm asking the court to rip, to put it in such amount so that she can't post. That's actually a thoughtful argument. Sit on his behalf. I don't believe that she's equipped. I've spoken to her. She's obviously a mother stuck between the love of her son and kind of everything that's going on. As I understand it, he has a 20 year history of schizophrenia. I don't think the court saw it while you were reading him the charges, but he came up and he punched the window um, during the during the uh, reading of the uh, of the complaint. Um, I believe that given the nature of these charges. This is a case where he was making homophobic, racist slanders from the porch of his apartment complex, which he doesn't die at anymore. I believe he surrendered that apartment. Okay, that's not funny, but I... <laughs> my, my, in my imagination, I reenacted that scene based upon his prior behavior here, and I, and I thought it's it's got to be pretty spectacular. And then... Yeah, that he got people's attentions. They were able to use their cell phone video, record him as he was making these statements out loud in the courtyard, and then he exposed himself and gratified himself in an indecent manner. Um, so I think he presents a risk of harm to himself, a risk of harm to others. I, I don't, he's got some vague connection through his Facebook account to Mesa, Arizona. He does have a previous history of failing to appear. Um, I think that there's a lot of issues that go on. Our underlying all of it is that he's mentally ill. Yeah. Jenner, I do have an order for competency. We would be asking for um, some type of nominal bond if he's uh, possible to post it. He does have the support of his mother. Um, he did have- well, You're asking for a forensic evaluation. I don't know how, I'm not going to sign that at this time. And that the only reason I'm going to sign it, I'm not sure, unless your office is dealt with him. I understand the other orders that you'd be in a position to make that or a request of the court to make that referral. So I'll set his bond at this time. I'll set it for the PCC. We can deal with it at that point. I'm going to set his bond. Yeah, I saw him. Fifty thousand dollars cash surety, standard conditions including no assault to behavior or use or possession of weapons, no alcohol, recreational marijuana, or any illegal drugs. And I've signed that off. We're all set. See him April fourth. Thank you, Washington County Jail. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, we were yeah, yeah, that guy's not fit to be in society. Uh, whether it's a mental health condition that can be helped, or he's just that angry, he, he certainly, he certainly cannot be free at this time uh, until things change. Mr. Adams, say your full name. Rob Mercy Adams. Mr. Adams, I'm Magistrate Charte. You here on two criminal matters. First case is 1804553301. The other case is 2404416301. Uh, you have an attorney. Go ahead, counsel. Good morning, Your Honor. Jessica Shire, P number 81798. On behalf of Mr. Adams, who weighs formal reading, understands his constitutional rights and stands mute on both matters, Your Honor. Thank you. I'm going to do a plea of not guilty. Court date. Is the same for both cases, May 14, 2024. It is a pretrial in front of Judge Bryant for both cases. On the animal case, uh, Mr. Adams, you are not possessed by, sell, 
any animals while this case is pending. Do you understand that? Uh, I said no. Do you understand no an no animals at, of any kind? I guess. No, there is no I guess. You mean I'm one of the biggest people in the list. Listen, listen, I own a big pit bull kingdom. I, I have a bag of Z Omega Chill, bag of two one holes, pit bulls, none of my stuff. I don't. Mr. Adams, let me tell you this. This case is from 2014. It is abandoning or cruelty to two or three animals. Even though it is approximately 10 years old, right now, I don't want you having any animals. You own okay. them. What I said, listen to me. I suggest you give them to somebody that can take care of them while this case is de being dealt with. Do you understand that? Okay. Okay, so that means while well, this case is in effect, you can't buy any animals. You can't sell any animals. You can't own, you can't pet no animals. I don't want you to be around any animals. That's just while this case is pending, and it shouldn't be longer than a few months. Do you understand that? This case is pending longer than a few months. <laughs> this this case is from 2014, but your court this this guy's so frustrating he's got the judge ghetto talking here today is may 14th do you understand that that's about two months away month and a half what happened to me getting out going home i'm supposed to be here for a tenth i'm not i'm not, excuse me we're not talking about excuse me we're talking about sir mr adams we are talking about the bond condition unless you can get an earlier court date the first place law was made with the first man that's the first judge of all time. I'm not supposed to be here at all. It's, it's a, I want to sit in here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Adams, the more you talk, the more you talk, the more that everything is being recorded, it can be used against you. What I suggest to you is to please obey all the bond conditions. Okay. That's the first case. That is cruelty or abandoning animals. The second case, it's assault and battery. And in that case, you're not to have any contact uh, with a Jeff Davis. That means no person-to-person -person contact, no contact with third parties, no phone uh, calls, no emails, no text messaging. That's a lot on the Mega Billion, Mega CEO, Mega BO, I'm the world of the pit bulls. Mr. Adams, Mr. No, Adams, no, we no. talked about this. Mr. <laughs> Adams, this is your... No, I don't hear it. Get me the fuck out of here. I got tether. I don't want to hear it. You not talking to me? Don't talk to me. Period. Now give me the fuck out of here. I had to. The rest of the way, I don't give a fuck what you about. Now y'all stop lying. Y'all lying. You don't want to hear it. Give us our price. Get us the fuck out of here. I don't have a court May 14th. Give my bars and let me go. I'm like your child. I don't want to talk to you. All my people is DMX. I know them personally. I don't fight them. I bring them, so I don't want to hear it. I'm the richest nigga alive in America. I want to get the fuck out of here, period. All these games y'all want to play? I'm tired of playing games with my mind city, bitch. Got a cost of public in the room. Y'all think that shit is fun? How much money you want to get me out of here? Because I pay what you want. I don't give a fuck about no court case. Real good and cowboy shit. I want to get the fuck out of here, period. I don't deserve this shit while I'm letting you know. Because the nigga sit up in the scope, think you steal money off me. You want to give me no fucking milk. Cause he's a white bitch. He can start robbing me all day. Nigga didn't pay what the fuck out. Well, what the fuck I got to sit up here? Cause he can't afford a gallon of milk for. Y'all somebody got pit bulls? I got a pit bull the size of Hawaii. All of them. And ain't none of them starving. Mr. Mr. Adams. Adams. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Adams. Everything is being recorded. Another buying condition, Mr. Adams. You're not possessed or you're not possessed of any of firearms or other dangerous weapons. Yeah, I got okay. firearms. And Mr. Adams, just so you know, your conduct has the question is is whether or not the court can deal with you because apparently you went off you cannot control yourself so i'm gonna let uh who is for the people mr adams lisa coyle on behalf of the people okay mr adams i'm gonna mute you because i want uh the people to make an argument and then i'm gonna let your attorney make an argument thank you go ahead council coil your honor in these can uh matters your honor uh although they're old i'm asking for a five thousand uh 
uh, cash surety bond as well as a tether in this matter. Okay. What's the reason for the tether and what's the reason for the cash surety? Yeah, the, the reason is that I saw, um, and I don't know what the disposition there was. Let me go back into it. It was an armed robbery that was out there from 2022. Um, I believe he is assaultive in this, um, in his nature. And also, um, he was in the lockup and uh, committed the assault. I'm asking for a cash bond as well as a tether to assure his appearance. I think there's a high possibility of mental illness in this case, Your Honor. And so as far as I'm asking for, based on assaultive nature and, um, I mean, cruelty to animals, I don't need to say any more on that. Um, and also his, to assure his appearance, I'm asking for that tether. Thank you. And Councilor Scheib, go ahead, Esteban. Your Honor, these are both charged as misdemeanors. One is dating back to 10 years old. Uh, it, it didn't get entered until four years after the incident date. For some reason, Your Honor, it's a 2014 incident date and then gets entered 2018. And the other matter is from September 2023. I'm not aware of any KPS history. I'm not aware of any incidents uh, since um, Mr. Adams does seem to be suffering from mental illness, Your Honor. Respectfully asking the court to consider um, a high personal bond. Let him be home on these old misdemeanor matters. We have three contacts phone numbers for him that he was able to provide us with our office will be handling this oh yeah i mean that's her job don't get me wrong but but i i'll tell you what this guy doesn't need a personal bond to go out and walk about in society right now case from start to finish we will make sure that mr adams is at his court dates again i don't believe there's kps history so there's no reason to believe he's not going to be at his court dates um a respectfully asking the court to um allow him to have that personal bond um, and we don't believe um, monitoring him is uh, necessary here. All right, first of all, as to the animal case, $25,000 personal bond. There's nothing to indicate that he won't show up for court. Okay, and Mr. Adams, I believe you can hear me. $25,000 personal bond, nobody has paying money for you to get out of jail. Now, when we're looking at the assault and battery in this occurred at Wayne County Jail, okay, in this particular matter regarding another inmate, okay, and Mr. Adams' outburst, my concern on Mr. Adams is for his protection and the protection of the community in this matter is that listening to the bond conditions, and these are not unusual, uh, these are not um, outrageous bond conditions in this matter and the way Mr. Uh, Adams went off on the court as well as to uh, the people as well as to the defense counsel, okay, uh, this court is concerned. Okay. And so in this matter, use them in monetary bond, uh, using uh, clear and convincing evidence, uh, this court is going to, based on his outburst and the charge, even though it is from September 2023, is that there's going to be a monetary bond on this matter. And Council Scheib, what I want to know is, is any bond an unaffordable bond? Your Honor, yes, it is. And the incident itself is allegedly taking place at Wayne County Jail. So we believe, you know, if, if, if the, it would be better if Mr. Adams was home, uh, hopefully getting the proper medication and care. And so I would, I would, I would agree with you. But is Mr. Adams' outburst, okay, his outburst right there, whether he is by Zoom or whether he would have been in front of the court, it is his outburst, counsel, that the court is concerned for his protection and for the protection of the community. In this particular matter, this bond is going to be $5,000 cash surety, and it's going to be a non-affordable bond. So that means that he's going to have a court date for this Friday. And this Friday will be uh, 
I believe, March 22nd, 2024, at 9 o'clock, in front of Judge McConnell, who's going to review the bond amount and bond conditions. Your, Your Honor, if I may respectfully, and on behalf of Hi, Mr. Adams, we apologize to the court for his outburst. It's not an excuse, just an explanation. Mr. Adams um, is, is a little uh, confused, and he's been being held for a few days without being arraigned, and he was unable to go, I believe, um, yes, two days ago, Monday, when he was supposed to be arraigned, because they said that he had tested positive for COVID. He says uh, he didn't, maybe he didn't understand, given what's going on with him, maybe mentally. So that is where his frustration is um, coming from, Your Honor, which could under be understandable uh, in these situations. So on behalf of Mr. Adams, we do apologize to the court uh, for his outburst, um, but I am asking the court to give him a chance on these older misdemeanor matters and allow him uh, to be at home so he could uh, at least uh, get the proper care and medication, Your Honor, and uh, we don't, again, have any reason to believe he's not going to be at court, Your Honor. Counsel, I don't know that I believe that Mr. Adams is outburst, and I could understand he can have some frustrations, but by his conduct today, if he would have been in front of me in person, this court would have been concerned with, okay, the safety of everybody that would have been in the, in the courtroom. But just his behavior by Zoom, okay, is enough that I was concerned for the individuals over there, over at the county. So, no, um, his bond is going to stay uh, March 22nd, $5,000 cash surety. March 22nd is his bond redetermination in front of Judge McConnell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Love, exciting and new. Okay, this comes to me from Jalapeno. I actually don't know. That, that may have been a premature Love Boat uh, clip. I, I'm not sure if there's any love involved. I've only seen about 20 seconds of this clip, and what I will tell you is everybody brace yourselves. Brace yourselves. This mouth breathing is going to get you. Sometimes I get too close to the mic, and you can hear me breathe a little bit, and people freak out. This is going to put you over the edge. Okay. This is in the District Court of Ellis County, Kansas. We have two cases, 24DM39, 24DM49. Both of them are Laura Casey versus Austin Moore. And are you Laura Casey? Pardon me? Okay, I'm not hearing you. Still not hearing you. I hear him. <laughs> not talking, just breathing. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And are you asking more? Yes, sir. Okay. We had two petitions filed. The first one in 24 DM 39 did not have the detail that was in the petition in 29 or 24 DM 49. The first one, 39, was filed February 29th and then refiled with more detail on March 11th. The court would propose we simply dismiss the 24 DM 39 and proceed on the 24 DM 49. Any objection to that, Ms. Casey? Your Honor. Any objection, Mr. Moore? No, sir. Okay, the 24 DM 39 is dismissed and will proceed solely on 24 DM 49. In all seriousness, I'm not a doctor, but that, that situation does not sound healthy. I, I, I mean, just by observing a Zoom clip, I, I think go to the doctor and get yourself fixed now. Okay. And that was filed on March 11th, 2024, and the court did issue some temporary orders with that petition. Have you received a copy of the petition, Mr. Moore? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. 
and it shows that you were served on March 12th of 2024. Yes. Okay. Okay, we are here today on the motion for the protection from stalking order to be issued. Mr. Moore, are you wanting a hearing on this matter? Yes. Okay. Ms. Casey, you'll need to present your evidence. Who would you like to have testify first? Yourself or someone else? Myself. Okay, would you raise your right hand, please? You solemnly swear and or affirm that you will tell the truth of the whole truth and nothing but the truth, subject to the penalties for perjury in the state of Kansas. Yes, Your Honor. Are you currently in the state of Kansas? Yes. Thank you. You may put your hand down. Okay, Ms. Casey, in detail, explain to me why you believe you are in need of a protection from stopping order. Um, so I broke up with Austin Moore on February wow. 15th. We've it been together love. for about four months. It is long. After that, I blocked Austin on all social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. As soon as we broke up, he started to message all my friends from school, anybody that I had close contact with. These messages were excessive and multiple phone calls were made from Austin. Also on February 15th, Austin drove past my work a few times while I was at work that day. On February 15th, about 9 p.m., I got out to my car to leave work at TK Smokehouse and there was a note left on my car from Austin. And then I didn't hear from him for a while, and then he started to message my parents and call them nonstop. On 2-18, I got a missed call from Austin Moore from Roadway Inn. He left me a voicemail saying that he wanted me to talk to him, that he loved me, and that I should give him a call on his regular phone. This is when I started to see that he displayed obsessive type behavior and can't move on after being informed of the breakup. On 2.26 at 9 a.m., I got a phone call from the Haste to Police Department where Austin stated to Officer Bartlett that I was harassing him. The officer stated that we should have no contact with each other on social media, phone, or in person. On 2.26, Austin sent messages <coughs> to both players on Facebook saying that my work should have never hired me because I'm picking on someone with a disability and that he knows a lot of people. On 2.26 at 7.41 p.m., Austin made a fake Snapchat profile impersonating a B. Richard Morris. He was asking how I was doing and that he was worried about me. In the messages, he stated who he actually is, and I got a picture of the top of his head that he sent me. He was asking that we should talk. He also tried to call me off that fake profile at 8 p.m. We took screenshots of the whole chat and then blocked the account. On February 20. People say that I And 35 a.m. Austin created another fake profile impersonating Anthony Dino, asking why we broke up and asking why we couldn't talk. He also states that I used him in the messages, which I never did. On February 27th at noon, Officer Bartlett came over to get pictures that I had from my Snapchat and asked questions and said they would go talk to Austin in person. On February 27th, the officer said two officers had a talk with Austin. He understood about the no contact. 122 on 227 Austin started to follow the J Studio and Salon page on Facebook. 227 at 128 p.m. Austin created another fake profile, but I was able to block it before he sent me any messages. On 227 at 911 p.m. Austin or his friend decided to make another fake profile under Harley Holler on Snapchat. She that stated that she was one of Austin's ex and also was asking why we broke up. Truth be told. On 2-29, I had multiple of my friends send me screenshots of videos that Austin posted on social media, like TikTok videos with my pictures on it, messages of him trying to get my friends to get me to talk to him. <clears throat> In one of the messages, he talks about what if I try to kill myself. He also says, now I have had it. I'm not the stupid one. She can go fuck herself. I gave her everything she wanted. She's being an ungrateful brat. 
On 3-2 at 5 p.m., Austin was spotted at the end of our block in our neighborhood sitting behind some trees. On 3-4 at 11.48 p.m., I had two unknown calls back to back, so I decided to call Hayes Police Department and inform them about the situation, and they said they would go talk to Austin. On 3-5 around 8 p.m., Austin was spotted again near our neighborhood. On 3-6 around 7 p.m., Austin was spotted driving past my work. He was on fire. On 3-7 around noon, Austin was spotted in our neighborhood again. On 3-8 around 9.15 a.m., Austin was spotted driving past Laura's work. On 3-9, Laura went out with her friends to Arcade 11 around 10 p.m. Austin showed up to the arcade about midnight, and then we decided to leave the arcade. When we went over to the sip, and, we went to the sip and spin after, and we were there till about. Sweet Jesus, we've been to the arcade and the sip and spin. <laughs> Are we in an episode of the happy days here? What's going on? 2 a.m., but Austin decided to show up to the sip and spin while we were there. When we left the sip and spin, he was outside waiting for us. So I went to the arcade and waited till he left the area. And then I had a friend take me home, got pulled over because her headlights were out. So then the officer asked us what we were doing and they asked me to come down to the station for questioning. And I left there about four or 5 a.m. And then they informed me that Austin was arrested. On 3-10 around 10 p.m., Laura was asked to come down to the station for more questioning and sign a paper to let them look through her phone. Uh, on 3-12, Laura was granted a temporary protection order against Moore. On 3-14, Austin was spotted near our neighborhood around 9.15 a.m., and I informed the cops about the situation. Seriously, we, we get the on idea. On 3-15, Laura was told to pack her stuff up at work, and she was informed she was no longer an employee at J-Studio due to a situation with her ex. The harassment interferes with not only my personal life, but now has extended to my work life and now threatens my livelihood. Oh. Miss Casey, you need to explain to me if you are in fear and why. Fear I'm for your personal to, safety. I'm not trying to ruin Austin Moore's life, but I feel like to this point, I feel like I can't really even go out with my friends anymore because he just follows us the whole time. But I just kind of want things to move on to where I'm able to actually go out with my friends and not have to worry about him following me around or me going places, him following me around. <coughs> okay, let me back up just a little bit here. <clears throat> Miss Casey, you're representing yourself in this matter? Yes, Your Honor. You intend to represent yourself in this matter? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Moore, you're representing yourself in this matter? Yes, sir. And it is your intention to represent yourself in this matter? Yes, sir. And you, don't, you have no intention of hiring an attorney at this time? Maybe. Well, what do you mean, maybe? We don't know yet. Okay. Oh, that was brilliant. Then he condescends to the judge. Well, what I mean by maybe is we don't know yet, judge. <laughs> Look, the judge is stupid. <laughs> Dude, you're at hearing. Oh, sweet Jesus. And somebody whipped me up a, uh, uh, a, 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 uh, a knockoff of Lawyers in Love, except we're going to change the lyrics to Mouth Breathers in Love. That, can you do that so I can just throw that up by the end of the stream here? Well, are you wanting to proceed <laughs> with the hearing or are you wanting to hire yes, an attorney? We can proceed with the hearing. Okay. You now, Mr. Moore, have a right to cross-examine Ms. Casey. Do you have questions for her about her testimony? On February 24th, me and her went to the basketball game. Oh my God, it continues. They, they, they still are doing the like 1950s teen date thing. Me and her went to the basketball game. You know, I, I, won't, I won't go to grammar. There, there's just too much material here. And I, she told me that her parents didn't know we were hanging out again. I told Laura, I said, I could take you home with my sister, pretty much like okay. my sister. Mr. 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 Moore, Mr. Moore, you'll get a chance to testify if you want to testify. 
Yes. You're not under oath yet. This is your time. This is your time to question Miss Casey about her testimony. Do you have no. questions about her testimony? No questions at all. Okay. <laughs> Miss Casey, do you have any other witnesses? You see, you know what we were talking earlier about maybe you getting an attorney? That that's one of those times when it's been really helpful. You, you know, when you're mid hearing and you need to cross examine the opposition. Yeah, that, that's 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 when you need one. You'd like to call, <laughs> but you keep thinking about it. Um, both of my parents are here if they're able to speak, Your Honor. Well, that's up to you. Are you wanting to call them as a witness? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay, who would you like to call? Uh, Spencer Casey, my father. Okay, Mr. Casey, if you could scoot in to where we can see both of you. Mr. Casey, if you'll raise your right hand, please. You solemnly swear and or affirm that you will tell the truth, that the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, subject to the penalties for perjury in the state of Kansas. I do. Go ahead. Ms. Casey, you can ask your questions of your father. And first thing, Mr. Spencer Casey, spell your first name. S-P-E-N-C-E-R. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Casey. Well, my father actually was the one that spoke with Austin when we got multiple phone calls and uh, harassment messages. And I mean, I kind of want him to tell like his side of the story of things, I guess. Okay, so you're asking him to tell what he knows about this situation. Yes. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Casey. Now, Judge Grease, I just want to say that, um, you know, after Laura's breakup with uh, Austin, Mr. Moore, um, you know, he continued to text my wife on, on her cell phone on multiple occasions, and we let this go on. We figured that there would be some feelings of ill will, you know, how breakups are with young people. Um, so it went on but it became to the point where uh he looked at my phone number and started to text me at the same time wanted to know why laura broke up with him and you know why we didn't uh, support him and um i reached a point where i thought that it was beyond excessive i, I felt i felt concern for mr moore uh, i i was worried about his mental state to be honest with you so I contacted him directly. I called him. I had a conversation with him and asked him if it would be okay to impart some advice to him. And he said, yes. So I basically told the young man that, you know, relationships don't always last and that Laura does have the right to break up with him and move on in her life. And I strongly suggested to him that he just breathe and take a breath and get some exercise and maybe go out and talk to some mentors of himself. He talked commonly about Coach Brown at Fort Hayes State University as being. Have you heard this guy breathe? I mean, it's it's really <laughs> it's really labor for him. Somebody that he could rely on. So I encouraged him in that phone call to reach out to Coach Brown, to talk to him about this problem, you know, to find a good network of friends and and find some things in his life that would be positive. And he seemed to understand what I was saying to him and. Again, we want no ill will for Austin Moore. We want him to be happy. We want him to live a, a good life. We just want him to do that independent of our own in this household. So, Judge, I just letting you know clearly that I do have concerns about his his state and his well being. I I think that you know he does need a mentor. He needs somebody that can can and help him through life. I mean, I know he doesn't have parents that are close. Somebody that could give him some guidance would be wonderful. And that's all I wanted to say in this matter. Oh, good Lord. I mean, that don't get me wrong. That's still hilarious. But but he, he truly is. He seems like a sincere, nice guy. He really does. Pointless to this hearing, as far as I can tell, but sincere and nice. And do you have any concerns for your daughter's safety? Yes, I, I, I do. I mean, I'm seeing a repeated pattern of, of this type of behavior that that hasn't stopped in the last two months. It seems a little excessive to me. Um, 
you know, I, I would hope by this point that we would see, you know, a drawdown in those things, but it, that has not been the case to my understanding. <coughs> Anything else? Any other questions of him, Ms. Casey? No, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Jalapeno, if this guy goes down with a clutcher in the middle of this hearing, I swear, I... I I'm, I will not be happy. Mr. Moore, do you have any questions of Mr. Spencer, Casey? No, sir. Okay. Ms. Laura Casey, do you have any other witnesses? No. Pardon me? No, you're on. Okay. Mr. Austin Moore, did you want to testify? Yes, sir. Hey, would you raise your right hand, please? You solemnly swear and or affirm that you will tell the now. truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, subject to the penalties for perjury in the state of Kansas. Yes, sir. And are you currently in the state of Kansas? Yes, sir. Thank you. You may put your hand down. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Austin Moore, what do you want to tell me about this situation? I'm bracing for it. Well. <laughs> I'm bracing for it. To be honest. The day when I was behind those trees, I'll tell you exactly where I was at, Honor. I was at Kelly Kinky's house talking to him and his <laughs> wife, Eme Kinky. And I seen her dad leaving when I was getting back into my... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> what, what, I, what I heard is, is he said I was at Kelly Kinky's house. Which I thought was a stripper name, you know. I I thought he was trying to drag the. He's just jagging everybody here, and then and then his next sentence, and he said, <laughs> "I can't. I don't know." My pickup. And a statement saying how she forgot to bring up the point when. I was with her on her birthday and everything. I was like, she's always doing this, breaking up with me and getting back together with me. Everything. It messes with somebody had to be honest when they do it that many times, like four to five times. To be honest, it just sucks. After she had me thrown in jail this past weekend, I to kill us though to get her back or anything. Just out to enjoy life now. Am I allowed to have somebody speak on my behalf to you? Well, you can call additional witnesses, but before that, Miss Casey has a right to cross examine you. Do you is there anything else, Mr. Moore, that you want to tell me before? You know what you could have done is you could have had someone speak for you called an attorney and they would have done a much better job because because your your testimony so far is I really love her until she threw me in jail and I'm done with her. Which is probably true, but not helpful to your cause. Before she cross-examined you. No, oh, sir. Okay. Miss Laura Casey, did you want to cross-examine Mr. Moore? Do you have any questions about his testimony for him? No. Okay. Another Mr. Moore, who crop. else did you want to, to speak? Mary Gilman. Sorry, what was the name? Mary Gilman. Okay. Is she there? Yes, sir. Okay. Will you raise your right hand, please? You solemnly swear and or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, subject to the penalties for perjury in the state of Kansas. I do. Okay, all right. you can put your hand out. Was that Mr. Moore walking away? Austin, you come sit down. Just sit down. Okay, he's here. Okay. 
Sorry. Mr. Moore, you can ask questions. And, and ma'am, I need you to spell your first and last name. M-A-R-Y. And then my last name, G-I-L-L-I-L-A-N-D. Okay. Mary Gilliland. Yes. Okay. And Mr. <coughs> Moore, you can go ahead and have, ask questions of Ms. Gilliland. When was that on February 24th? <clears throat> so on February 24th, um, Austin and Laura um, showed up at the Fort Hayes basketball game together. Um, I was there because I took, I was working at DSNWK and I had two of my boys with me. We were sitting up at the top and Laura and Austin came and um, they were fine. They were enjoying time, took pictures together. And then Austin had asked me if I could take, if he could take my car to take Laura home because she didn't want her parents seeing that she was with them. And I told him no. Um, if she needed a ride home, I would gladly give her a ride home. What about February 23rd? Um, February 23rd, it was her birthday night. Austin had actually given her a necklace. Um, it was like, I don't know. Gave her a necklace for her birthday. Austin also went out with them on her birthday. Ended up taking her to the ER that night. Uh, Laura stayed with Austin in his hotel room that night. Um, and they were together celebrating her birthday and ended up in the ER because Laura wasn't, she, Austin was worried about her. So went to the ER. And, okay, Austin asked me anything else. Um, you want to ask her about her side of the story, what she knows? Well, she's your witness, Mr. Moore. You can ask her to testify about information she knows about the situation. Yes. She knows about it really good order. Um, so Austin, I'm actually kind of his caregiver. He's been living, he lived with me for about a year and a half. Um, when he met Laura, they seemed to really hit it off, whatever. Um, and then, and then they started, um, she would break up with him. They get back together a week <laughs> later, break up, get back together. It was a back and forth, um, relationship. Um, when they broke up, Austin would text, ask people to, um, text her, whatever. Um, Laura always came back one way or another. There was the time, I think February 24th, 5th, Laura had messaged me that morning and had said, I'm ending things with Austin. I would like no contact with anybody who knows Austin. I said, okay, I wished her the best and went on with life. Um, I told Austin that, Austin, you need to quit, move on with life. And at that point, Austin was not living with me. But during their relationship, I even had a verbal conversation with Laura and Austin. I had a, Laura come over to my house. I sat them both down and I told them both, if you guys want to be together, be together. But you guys, this going back and forth is not good for either mental state. It's not good to be in this type of situation. Laura verbally told me, I understand, but I want to work things out with Austin. I want to be with him. I said, okay. So they went back over. They were at Eric Markley's house for a Chiefs game. The Super Bowl game. The Super Bowl game. Oh, <laughs> and then there okay. was another. Mr. Moore, you need to, you can ask questions, but you can't help her answer the questions, okay? No, it was like me about to ask a question. Make sure to mention it was the Super Bowl. Um, so Austin was staying at the roadway in through the time after I kicked him out of my house. He did call Laura off the roadway in because Laura showed me, told me about it, and I told Laura. At that point, I said, if you are worried, if you're unsafe, do something about it. She never did at that point. She was staying with him at the roadway in. She um, still had contact with Austin through the way, roadway in. Um, they hung out a lot when he was out, and this was after February 15th. They were hanging out. <coughs> out at the roadway in they were going out to eat to places um my opinion i understand where laura's coming from 100 but also 
she was never giving Austin full closure for anything. And the night of the 25th, when she broke up with him, before- wait, I, I, I'm not following this. Did, did he go out with both of these chicks, and now and now she's testifying that she understands? Where- <laughs> this is a freaking nightmare. This is a nightmare. Oh, let's let's carry on, shall before- we? Four. <laughs> they, she had told me even that she wanted Austin to talk to her parents so her parents would understand everything because that's when her parents didn't know they were hanging out. So I told Austin, I said, if that's what she wants to do, you should verbally reach out to her parents and explain. So he, that's when he did, and then it blew up. I, I do see where Laura's coming from with the safety and everything. But- yeah, good point. How many times in, in the course of human ha- events has somebody called somebody as a witness who kicked them out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's happened before. It's got to be rare. It's got to be rare. Generally, you want your witnesses to help your case. Also, she was going back and forth, back and forth, never giving him the full closure of anything. Oh, okay. And she was hanging out with Austin multiple times after she has she had ended it. <laughs> I have no idea. And that's all I have. Mr. Moore, do you have any other questions of Ms. Gilliland? No, Honor. No, sir. Okay. Ms. Casey, do you have questions of Ms. Gilliland? I do, Your Honor. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I was wondering why did she kick Austin out of her house? Um, well, I had some things that i mean he is autistic he needs that help and i was here helping him um there were some things that got out of hand i was getting too busy with work i couldn't help him anymore um and then fine the main reason that just pushed me to my limit was he got fired from hess he got another job at roof masters i believe And that Friday, he had told me he was sick, didn't want to go to work. And I said, no, Austin, you need to go to work. And then he said, it's because I'm heartbroken, whatever. And I said, okay, stay home from work. I told him he wasn't going to do anything that weekend. After, and then him and Laura had broken up. They weren't speaking at that point, I don't believe. And he was just getting super frustrated. um, And I just didn't want to be involved with it anymore. I didn't want to handle it because... He's not in the right state of mind. He does need that extra help. Um, He can't deal with things like he can't deal with a lot of emotions. And when he is put in a situation like this, he doesn't understand how to do it. Um, So that is why I kicked him out of my house. Any other questions, Ms. Casey? Did you ever fear for your safety when you're around Austin more? Yeah. Okay. Another, another great performance from his witness. His witness gets on, says, says he's got a lot of issues and then, and then tells the opposition that she fears for his, her safety around him. I, <laughs> Maybe, just maybe, an attorney would have been a good idea here. Did you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Did you hear me? Yes, we heard your okay. answer. Any other questions, Ms. Casey? Does Austin have a problem with alcohol, and is he dangerous when he has alcohol in his system? No. When Austin drinks, he cannot stop himself. Um, he keeps going, keeps going. There was actually an incident where I had my friends over at my house. Laura had came over. Um, he got he got frustrated with one of my friends, and um, Laura had I think taken him into his room and tried to calm him down. Um, Austin, I would say he does have a drinking problem. He actually, since he's been in jail, he has not had a sip or a drink of alcohol, and I can definitely see um, he's not so uptight, I guess. But yes. Do you think a restraining order is good for both of us? 
I think both ways, yes. And that's it, you're wrong. Mr. Moore, do you have any questions of Ms. Gilliland based on Ms. Casey's questions? No, but she can tell you one thing, though. I don't believe in hitting women. I don't believe in hurting them. I don't believe in none of that, Order. She can tell you that from one night when she was, when I was provoked by another. Are you at I mean, th this sort of thing always gets me. It's like, yeah, yeah, w sure, we all agree with the sentiment, but if you if you have to say it out loud, it re it really puts everything into question, doesn't it? Are you asking her that question? Yes. Austin, I don't think would ever physically hurt a woman. I don't think he would ever lay a hand on a woman. I have watched girls like at the bars and stuff. Girls would come up to him, get in his face and he would just get mad and yell. I don't believe Austin would ever physically put his hands on a woman, no. Any other questions, Mr. Moore? No, not really, Sporter. Okay. Can I please have one statement though before everything's over with? I had the same thought. Well, I have one more question. Hang on just a minute, Mr. Moore. We're not finished with this part of the, the hearing. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Casey. Um, Mary, did he ever scare you? Yes. Any other questions, Ms. Casey? Yes, just give me one second. Do you feel like Austin needs help? I think Austin needs to be somewhere where he can have a counselor. Um, he does need that extra support. I tried. I couldn't help him as he does need somebody with. So that'd be a yes. He, he does need somebody every day to base his help. Can the state provide that? Yes, it can. I believe so anyways. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Moore? No order. Okay. Do you have any additional witnesses, Mr. Moore? No, sir. Okay. Ms. Casey, do you have any rebuttal witnesses? No, Your Honor. Okay. Now, at this point, you get to make a closing argument. Okay, so I'll start with Ms. Casey. And you don't have to make a closing argument if you don't want to. This is your chance to talk to me before I make my ruling. I just want to wish more uh, happy life and hope that things are better for him now. Love, exciting and new. Um, I, I did that to troll you. I want to make one thing clear. <laughs> I, I would never hurt her. Never lay a hand on her. Don't believe in that. Don't care. I think if anybody lay a hand on a woman, they should be put to jail for life. But do I still love her? Yes, but do I want to be with her anymore? No. I hope the best of life for her and everything else on her. Excuse me. And I got one more other thing to say, though. 
Yes, you may say uh, something else. Oh, Mr. Coach Brown does live in that neighborhood. I, I like when I was it. behind those trees, I was talking to Kelly Kinky, like I said earlier, <laughs> and everything. Okay. Like, he Kelly doesn't King, have much room like to park at his house. I just parked over there on the side of the road. And I'm pretty sure her dad told her I was there that day, but I was getting into my pickup when I seen her dad from hanging out with Kelly. Okay. I actually had a cigarette with Kelly. Under the Kansas statute, they define stalking. <laughs> that was his final words in the case. His final words in the case is I had a cigarette with, with Kelly with, with Kelly Kinky. <laughs> and the judge just says, okay. Under the statute in Kansas. As an intentional harassment of another person that places the other person in reasonable fear for their safety. Harassment is defined as an intentional course of conduct directed at a person that seriously alarms, annoys, torments, or terrorizes the person with no legitimate purpose. And they also define course of conduct as two or more separate acts over a period of time, evidencing a continuing purpose which would cause a reasonable person to suffer substantial emotional distress. Mr. Moore, we have a whole litany of behavior that was testified to by Ms. Casey. Some of it you have explanation for, uh, some of it you did not offer an explanation for, but it includes continuing to specifically after law enforcement directed you not to have any contact with her. And law enforcement did that both on uh, February 26th through Officer Bartlett and then again on February 27th with two officers and they directed you to have no contact. And after that, we still have a series of contact that you had regarding Miss Casey, including the fake profiles trying to contact her then when you um, oh. had friends send multiple screenshots and videos. Um, and then when you were parked at the end of her block, <coughs> then you were spotted at her two places of employment multiple times. And then we have the situation where you approached her at the Arcade 11 and the Sip and Spin oh. after law enforcement told you not to have contact. Well, there, there's a video of me walking right past her at this arcade. Uh, and everything. When the officers tell you not to have contact, that means no contact. That means if you walk in and you see her at a place, you turn around and you leave. Okay. 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 I literally don't think he appreciates this. And then we have the testimony where you continued to contact her places of employment to the point that that her place of employment got fed up and they fired her. Okay. So we do have a repeated pattern and course of conduct over several incidences that would cause a reasonable person to suffer substantial emotional distress. So we have met the definition of stalking, okay? Yes, sir. And you need to understand that once you've broken up with a person, you're, you're broken up. That means no more contact, okay? So the court is going to grant the restraining order. Court finds that the plaintiff uh, has proven stalking by a preponderance of the evidence by her testimony and the testimony of her father here today. And while some of it was countered by Mr. Moore, it does not 
change the fact that you've engaged in a prolonged series of contact with Ms. Casey, specifically after law enforcement directed you not to? Yeah. Well, I got a question. Is this just a one way? Was it double? Hang on. I, I will I will cover that, okay? I will cover that. Court further finds that based on the behavior, while you say you would never. Uh, I, I, I feel bad. Maybe he's just playing on my emotions here and he's like, sorry, sir, and all this nonsense. It, it, clearly, I think he fits the statutory definition, but I don't know if he has the mens rea. I, I don't. This guy's touched. I don't know if he fully appreciates what he's doing. That, that's all I'm saying. I, I don't know. I, I'm not there. I'm not a clinician, but that is a serious question in my mind. Never heard anyone. The course of conduct uh, leads the court to find that you do present a credible threat to her safety. So the court is going to grant the restraining order. Okay. Now, this is a as you said, one-way restraining order because I have a petition from Miss Casey to have a restraining order against you. I do not have a petition from you to have a restraining order against her. I also like to say one more thing. Well, Mr. Moore, it's my turn to talk, but I will let you make your statement. <coughs> What do you want to say, Mr. Moore? So I, she brought up my fake accounts and everything. I just seen never bring up her fake accounts. <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately, Mr. Moore, you you had an opportunity to present your evidence, yeah. and that was not brought. Hearing's up. over. <laughs> so let me continue with my ruling. Okay. And so the court does grant. You just sit there and keep thinking about whether or not you want an attorney. I got to finish my ruling now. The order of protection <laughs> from stalking. This order is effective for a period of one year. And that will be through March 18th, 2025. Okay. And only a court can change this no contact order. Okay, so there's no just you and Miss Casey agreeing to let it fall by the wayside. The court has issued the order. Only the court can remove the order, Mr. Moore. Okay. I this guy will violate because he he he'll get emotional and he and he barely grasps what's going on. So I feel bad. Like I don't think uh, I don't think he's got a. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he's like all that bad of a guy, but I, I just don't think he appreciates what's happening here. I do need to give you some warnings. Okay. This order replaces the temporary order that the court put into effect on March 11th. Okay. Mr. Moore, you are not to have any contact with Miss Casey in any way, shape, or form, directly or indirectly, or through third persons. Okay, you can't have somebody else try to contact her. You can't use a fake social media account to try to contact her. Absolutely no contact. You understand that? <coughs> yes, sir. But I got you can just have Kelly Kinky give her a call for you, though. Oh, wait, wait. no, no, you can't do that either. A question. <laughs> What's your so question? So she would make a fake social media account to contact me. I didn't know it's her. And I replied back, hey, or something. I will still probably get in trouble, what did I? Yes. <laughs> so if that were to happen, you need to notify the police, not notify her. Okay? Because you cannot have contact with her. Okay. Okay. You cannot follow her, you cannot harass her, you cannot assault her, threaten her, or in any other way stalk her or interfere with her privacy rights or of her family or household. Okay? 
So if she has a roommate, don't have any contact with her roommate. Don't have any contact with her parents or her siblings. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. You cannot use or threaten any physical force that would reasonably be expected to cause bodily harm against the person, nor shall you engage in any conduct that would place her in reasonable fear of bodily harm. Okay. So am I still allowed to go see like like Coach Brown and the people I know around there? Well, as long as you don't go to her house where she lives or her parents' house. Oh, she lives with her parents. Understand that if, if you're constantly going to her neighbor's house, that's going to give her concern and rightfully so. So you might arrange to meet those people other than at a, a house if it's next to her house. And I don't know where Coach Brown lives in relationship to the Casey's. So you might meet him elsewhere, okay? Now you are not allowed to go anywhere around her residence or her place of employment, okay? You're not allowed to in any way communicate with her or her employer or her fellow employers or co-workers. That's not, no, that no contact is direct or indirect. So you can't ask a third person to contact her. So you, for example, you can't ask a friend to contact her, employer to contact her. That's still contact from you. Okay. She'll not in any way harass her telephone or through social media. Okay. Don't even talk about her on social media. can't post any photographs of her on social media. You understand that? Yes. Well, how can I make this like a double-sided deal? Well, in this situation, I can't make it double-sided. It's, it's a situation where she has requested the restraining order against yeah, you didn't file a petition. You could get a time machine and go back in time, and then you could file a petition, and then you could ask for it right now. Just you. If you believe that you have been put in a situation where it's stalking, then you can apply for a protection from stalking. Or if you believe she is harassing you, then you can cross <coughs> a restraining order. Okay. Right? It's one of those things the attorney you were thinking about hiring would know about. Now, I would caution Miss Casey not to have any contact with you, but I can't order that in this proceeding. Mm -hmm. but with a no contact order in place, if she causes, if she intentionally causes you to break it, she could expose herself to some liability, okay? Yes, sir. So she'll stay away from you because by this case, she's asked that there be no contact between the two of you, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Moore, I also need to give you some additional warnings. Yes, sir. You need to understand that I am signing this order today, so it's effective immediately. Yes, sir. And a copy of the order will be placed with dispatch so that law enforcement is in Ellis County is aware of it. They'll have access to the restraining order. 
Yes, sir. Protection from stalking restraining order, okay? So if you violate this order, that can constitute a violation of certain Kansas laws, including, first and foremost, violation of a protection order. That is a crime to violate a protection order. You understand? Yes, sir. I was told that when I was in jail. Okay. If you have direct contact with her, uh, you could be charged with assault and or a battery against her. If you go to her place of employment or her residence, you could be charged with trespassing. Okay. And if you continue to engage in a pattern of behavior towards her, you could be charged criminally with stalking. Stalking is both a civil where you can obtain a restraining order, but it could also be a criminal offense if you continue to contact her. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Also, if you violate this order, it could re result in the court extending the order for a second year. And if it's a serious violation, the court can extend the order for lifetime. Okay, so don't violate the order. You need to understand that if you violate the order, in addition to it being a potential violation of the law, it is also punishable by contempt of court. So if you violate this court order, you could be placed in jail or fined. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Judge, question after your turn. Okay. Do you have a concealed carry license? No, sir. Okay. Because this would affect that. So, uh, I would not try to apply for one during this next year because that's not going to happen while you have this order in place, okay? All I got is a bow. Okay. And while you have this order in place, you could be subject to prosecution for possession of certain weapons. If you are found anywhere around Miss Casey with a weapon, including your bow, then you could be prosecuted for a criminal use of a weapon. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. And there are federal laws regarding restrictions for firearms when you have a protection order in place. Okay. Do you have any firearms? No, sir. Okay. I would not have any during this next year while you're under this restraining order. Okay. Okay, what are your questions, Mr. Morris? Why can you do so much for a person that they do this to you? I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. I said, why can you do so much for a person that they just do this to you? Okay, well, Mr. Moore, you're getting into more questions about why do relationships go bad? And sometimes they just do, okay? People say that our love affairs will never last. Requires two people to start dating and stay together. Dating is a way to figure out if you're compatible, and sometimes you figure out you're not compatible. Oh, good Lord, he's trying. <laughs> okay. And then when the breakup happens, you have to move on. And it's not easy, but you move on. Okay. Uh -huh. Mr. Moore, it is time for you to move on, okay? Oh, I moved on. Okay. Do you have any other questions, Mr. Moore? No, not really. To be honest, am I allowed to leave now? I am signing the order. <laughs> the, because I really I have to get out of That's actually endearing. Can I just go now? Okay, I lost everything. Fine. I accept it. Can I go? No, I told myself I wasn't going to look at her again, and now I'm looking at her. I'm just ready to leave. Stop. Okay, well, Mr. Moore, please take this serious. 
I am taking it serious. Right. And allow this to relationship to be completely over and move on. Okay. Yeah, I got to go to work. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Do you have any more questions? Oh um, no. Okay. Do you have any questions, Miss Casey? Um, can the judge help assist Austin in state counseling? Well, at this point, it's up to him to uh, locate some help with some assistance. And I would encourage that, but I'm not going to order that at this time. I would encourage him to contact DSNWK or other agencies that can assist him. His caseworker is through DSNWK. Okay. If, so. He, he should go back to and, and continue to gain assistance through DSNWK. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Am I still allowed to go eat at TK's? Just like without Austin. That oh, won't like Jesus. interfere with anything, will it? Okay, Ms. Casey, you don't see her as a threat? No, Your Honor. Okay, yes, you can continue to go to TK's. Okay. Well, because I have been staying away with all this and I've been really craving TK, so. Okay. <laughs> You're certainly welcome to go over there. Just don't discuss uh, Mr. Yeah, Moore. I won't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank I, you I don't all. Know what to say. <laughs> you here for it, please. Oh, here we go. More Kansas fun. Uh, Your Honor, I have only one client. Mr. Lett and I are still going back and forth. So if you'd like to continue with the jail, that'd be fine. Let's do that then. Thank you. We are on the record now. I'm thinking process of elimination. Are you Mr. Labor? Yes, ma'am. And am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes, you are, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. We are on the record in 2024 CR 79, State of Kansas versus Rodney Glenn Laver. The state appears by and through Greenwood County Attorney Jill Gillette. Mr. Laver appears in person, in custody, and pro se. Mr. Laver, this is your formal first appearance on your charges. In count one, you are charged with the felony drug offense of possession of methamphetamine, a level five drug felony, which means... I got to say that surprised me. I don't know how to put this, but he doesn't fit the profile. ...means if convicted, you could serve at least 10 months in prison, but you could be ordered to serve up to 42 months, and you could be ordered to pay a fine up to $100,000. In count three, you're accused of unlawful possession of drug paraphernalia in the form of a plastic baggie, cigarette pack, rolling papers, butane lighter, and smoking pipe. As charged, this is a B non-person misdemeanor. If convicted, you could serve in addition to any prison time up to uh, six months in the county jail where you are now and a $1,000 fine. Then in count three, you're accused of unlawful possession of a controlled substance. Okay, this is out there, but he really puts me in mind of the heat miser in the uh, Rudolph uh, Christmas special. That substance being marijuana and or its active ingredient THC, another B non-person misdemeanor, which means you could add another six months to your jail sentence and you could get another $1,000 fine. Do you have any questions about your charges? No, Your Honor. Honor. Okay. And are you going to hire an attorney or apply for court appointed? I'm applying for a court appointing, court appointed attorney. All right. Are you employed at this time, sir? No, I'm on disability. And what do you get per month for disability? Um, like nine fourteen. Okay. Do you pay a month? Do you have any kind of bills you pay from that? You know, yes, I pay rent with my mother. I pay. Uh, I live with my mother okay. at the time. I lived with her for 14 years now at the same address. Okay. Um, she, and she charges you a little rent? Rent and a little bit extra for utilities. Okay. All well, right. I'm going to appoint an attorney to represent you. Well, Missy can more. tell my assistant can tell you later in the week who your attorney will be and how to reach the attorney. And uh, in the meantime, Missy, when will his hearing be? 
We're going to have to have lab reports on this one, so. I'm going to set this one on that March, I mean, April 26th date. 26? At 1.30. Your court date will be April 26th at 1.30 by Zoom. Okay. Back here with your attorney by then. And is this on the 26th for a misdemeanor docket? It's April 26th. It's yeah. PHC with that meth charge. I thought the 29th is the PHC docket. No, of April. Oh, of April. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we filled that March 29th more than we should, so <laughs> we'll go into that April 26th. <laughs> All right, now then, that leaves us with the issue of bond. What's this bond set out? About 10? Uh, 5,000. 5,000. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm asking kindly if I could be OR to, I'm, so, really suck on money, but I lived at this address for 14 years. I've never missed a court date in my life. Well, I've missed a few, but I've been, I've, you know, I've taken care of it, of it. And if I don't make it, you're able to call Cherryville, Kansas police, and they will pick me up with no questions asked. They do that from time to time, do they? Yes, they do. They've done it once on me once before, and it's nothing to brag about, Russ. <laughs> Judge, don't worry about it. The, the police are already all over me. You can you just one call, they, they will ring my ass up. They know they know where I am at all times. And I went and completed my probation with them on that case, and, and I'm done with it. I ain't been on no trouble in I don't know how many years now. And I'm, I'm, I got an elderly mother that I take care of at home. And this was just uh, an unbelievable mistake. Going, I was just passing through to go home. All right. Well, your attorney would probably tell you not to say any more that could incriminate you. And okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's let's kind of. And let's face it, his attorney's Darren Patterson. Whether he is or he isn't, I'm just assuming the man's in Kansas. He's represented by Darren Patterson. Okay, so you've lived in Cherryville with your mother for at least 14 years. Yes, ma'am. And you're getting a disability check from the federal government or the state government? State. All right. And how long have you been getting that? Um, for quite a few years now. All right. So if you disappeared, you'd lose your check because... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. That's, that's almost like a security bond. Yeah, uh, and I can't lose it. I cannot lose that money. And what do you do with your time? I take care of my mother throughout the day. When she needs something, she hollers for me. I go do it. And that's right now. I got friends taking care of her right now for me while I'm in here, and she's waiting for me to come home. Okay. Translation, he does absolutely nothing but leeches off her because she has a place. We all know it. I mean, he's a, he's a nice guy. He's, he's actually kind of charming in this and likable. But, yeah, you know, stop with the, with the things that nobody believes. And you've had some criminal trouble. What's his record look like if you have it, Miss Gillette? Uh, Judge, I haven't gotten his triple I yet because this just happened the 16th, and I charged him yesterday, I believe, because um, I just got it, I think, yesterday. He hasn't been in trouble since 2022, so it's been two years. No, that's a PFA. He hasn't been in trouble since 2020. Um, that's on that weed case. He had some prior issues back in the early 2000s, but he hasn't had uh, issues since 2020. It's been two years. And um, I so, think I say something about it. That was that weed case. So was that a marijuana case? Yes, ma'am. It was when. Um, well, I'm asking Miss Gillette. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. I'll explain it to you. He <laughs> had, probably say not. He, he's had some misdemeanors and traffic infractions judge uh quite a few on his record and then he's got 
back in the t early 2000s, he had some more serious crimes. I'm looking at his history, um, but he hasn't had any criminal issues. Okay. In a while. okay. Yeah. Uh, Jerryville is not one of those neighborhoods you're familiar with, is it, Miss Gillette? It is. It's Montgomery County. I used to be a prosecutor down there. <laughs> Did you ever prosecute him or his mother or anybody like that? This is good. No, he was not in trouble during the time I was there. <laughs> you do look familiar. Well, that you. Things not to say. Things not to say. Oh yeah, yeah. The prosecutor looks familiar to me. Okay. Yeah. That's through the city, though, going and paying bills and stuff. Nothing other than that. I was gonna say your attorney would tell you. Stop. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not good when the prosecutor looks familiar to you after that many years. That she looks like the one that works there now. No. Well, she worked in another county, but I don't know about Cherryville. All right. So, I'm Ms. Gillette. Any problem with him taking an OR bond? Um, No, Judge. I don't think he's going to get too far away from that check, so... Yeah. All yes. right. Go ahead. So you OR me, ma'am? I am going to OR you with the condition that you live with your mother, you help your mother, you have absolutely no drugs, no alcohol. And I'm you, done. I'm done with it. And you stay away from anybody that might make drugs or alcohol available to you. I promise you. Okay, and you call my assistant, Missy, later this week, find out who your attorney is, and get a hold of that attorney, and be ready to go as much as you can on April 26th at 1.30. Any questions about any of that, sir? No, Your Honor. Right. Stay off the weed as well as the meth. I promise you I will. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. You may go at this time, sir. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if Boom Hower can do it, but I wish him well. I wish him well. But an another 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 man breaking down in court. It's it's never good when a guy loses his emotions. We're not wired that way. Stop trying to convince me that this is uh this is a good idea cuz it's not. Okay? <laughs> I'm talking to like 1% of my my, my viewers here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, yeah. that that PPO thing was uh, it was hilarious, but I I felt bad. That that guy's simple. He doesn't. He's simple, and I and I hope he gets checked out medically. I really do. I don't know him or anything, but he, that breathing's not right. I'm no I'm no doctor, but <laughs> I think that needs to be looked into. I, I seriously. All right, so that that was a that, that was a wild journey. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I'll see you all soon.